Hey guys, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ. We're on to day number three of stay home training. Today, really excited guys, we're gonna be working on the white belt curriculum overview. So this is all solo drills that you can do from anywhere, from your home, you don't need a partner, and these are really specific martial arts based movements. So as you might know, effective martial arts is one curriculum for striking, wrestling, and grappling. So we strive to give our students everything they need to know to be able to move efficiently, and effectively in all aspects of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So in the previous days, we did focus more on fitness and definitely fitness is it should come first because you need to have the strength and the ability to do those movements. So your body needs to be strong, um, but also you need to be able to move in certain ways. There are certain patterns that if you want to apply techniques in martial arts, you need to be able to move your body first. So self-mastery comes first. If you can control your body, you'll be able to control another person's body and move uh, in the best ways when you are uh, practicing martial arts. So, um, now, uh, let's get right into it. We're gonna start with a warm up. You need to have, a, I'm gonna be using the mats a little bit, but we're gonna try to minimize the impacts on the ground. So you can do this on a hard floor. Um, but if you have mats, it's better. So even like a rug would do it, or you could put kind of towels, it will help. But you, you will be able to do this on a hard floor as well. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick overview, warm up first, and then we're gonna do wrestling basics to start because that's the most kind of physical part of it. And then we're gonna do striking basics, so all the basic strikes with the fighting stance and defensive maneuvers. And we're gonna start, we're gonna finish with grappling basics, which is really important to be able to move your body. And there's really certain set of specific patterns that you need to be able to do in order to uh, apply those techniques with a partner later on. And we're gonna do more partner uh, drills, fitness, and applications uh, later on uh, during the week and in future weeks, as long as this goes on. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. So start with a warm-up. Uh, and if you have any uh, comments, go ahead. Uh, we're gonna read them live, and I'm gonna be responding to comments in real time. Or after, if you watch the recording, uh, I would like you guys to uh, comment right now. Uh, say sh training, if you're training, and if you're watching the recording as well, if you're starting your training, comment training right now. So I wanna know who's doing it. Uh, checking you guys, making sure you guys keep on progressing. Okay, so both feet like this, nice and relaxed, breathing. Do a little bit left and right. And let's uh, warm up a little bit of striking here. So just fighting stance here, a little bit of fighting twist, jab and cross, uppercuts, hooks, nice and relaxed. Okay, we're not uh, doing, uh, it's important when you start warming up, you're not putting everything you got into it. So it's really just about getting moving and getting the blood flowing and doing those movements, but in a more relaxed, more um, smoother way when you start to warm up. Everything good with the camera? Cool. Good front kicks. Now we're gonna go in detail. So it's gonna be a little bit more technical for those who don't have the experience yet, haven't been practicing uh, martial arts yet, uh, but I will explain. I'll try to give you as much details and common mistakes as people do. And uh, it's a good overview. Even if you know nothing about martial arts, just watching this thing the whole way through will give you a good first glance and uh, kind of a first uh, uh, introduction to all the techniques, and it's good even to watch. If you, if you don't feel like training, if you're tired from the previous days, you can also just watch this, and it'll give you a lot of good information, everything you need to know to cover the white belt curriculum, which is all solo drills, solo movements that you need to uh, be able to do to be able to apply the techniques later on. All right, so let's do joint mobility, so circles with the head, good deep breathing, other side, uh, shoulders, backwards and forwards. So we're gonna spend about 15 minutes per range, basic movements. All right, so right here and here. Let's do full arm rotations, forward, one arm, and backwards, and the other arm, forward, deep breathing. Whole way through your workout, whatever sport or physical activity you're doing, you do wanna be breathing out and breathing in, constant breathing, deep breathing the whole time. And backwards, both arms. Good, now let's do upper body here. So bend the spine in every direction. A little bit sideways so you can see. Bend the back, arch the back, lean in every direction. Another side, same thing. Here. You should feel it in the muscles in your spine, in the back. Always breathe. Now hips. 
Big circles. Here. And the other side. Still breathing. So, hope you guys are keeping your head up and you're making the most of this time, using your time uh, effectively. So, training at home, learning stuff. Uh, we published a great video on YouTube yesterday on how to learn martial arts online. So, uh, make a mental note to check that out after this. Uh, so to give you the tools to be able to make the most of the situation, right? We don't always choose the circumstances of our lives, but we can always choose how we feel about it and what we do about it. Let's do left leg, front and back. Here, front and back. Breathe out. One more, here, and side to side. Think good? No comments so far? Ronnie, Thomas, Shoka. And Ethan, yes, are all awesome. Glad you're there, guys. Good to be able to connect with you through technology. Here. Hope you're training as well. Right, it's going to be a good overview. These are uh, white belt bases, even for more advanced martial artists. I know a couple of our advanced students are here. These are movements that you should do all the time, regardless. Okay, so even when you have the opportunity to train with partners, there's still a huge benefit in doing those movements on your own because. It's kind of just keeping your technique sharp, side to side. Make sure your heel goes up higher than your toes. There we go. And now plant both feet. Let's do left and right. On the left, look on the right. Breathe out on both sides. Now a couple squats to warm up here, nice and low. Make sure you have good posture and you're sticking your bum out. And up. So when we're doing the wrestling, this is going to be uh, our key position for wrestling. It's the first thing we teach our students, if you can't do a proper squat, you can't wrestle. Okay, so you've got to be able to squat and it's going to help in every aspect of your general fitness and also martial arts skills is a very important exercise. Moving on, stretching with the hips and so now increasing the range of motion with the hips. Took a second one. Here, that's it. So going left to right. Yeah. So let's go. I can put crap up. Leave it. So let us Here. Nice and low with one shoulder. Low with the other. That's it. Good. Fingertips and one knee to the ground. Here. 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 Make the, the hips nice and loose. This is something, especially as we age a little bit, I found that uh, before I did this regularly, I was starting to have a little bit of a hip impingement. So when I move, sometimes it hurts a little bit in the hip. But if you do these exercises regularly, uh, you will avoid that and you increase your range of motion with the hips. So here, squat position, push the knees out. Still breathe. Good. All right, guess you still got me head to toe. Okay, so left and right, like so. Keep your hips really low and make sure that your back, lower back is straight. Transitioning from leg to leg. Make sure our legs are nice and warm up. Now pivot, transition here, drop the hips, posture up, and you should feel a stretch over here. Other side. And switch. Switch. All right. Okay. Shake it off. Now, let's get right into wrestling basics. Probably the most important, uh, arguably the most important range of martial arts. If you look at top, top UFC fighters, they most, most of them have a wrestling background. That's because you can control, control the wrestling, you control the direction of the fight. So, these are the basic moves that you should do all the time, starting with the shoot. So, level change and penetration step. Okay, so very simple. We're going to do it together. First, we're gonna start in our fighting stance over here. And we're gonna go kind of quick, guys, because there's a lot of techniques to cover, but do your best to follow. And if you have the experience already, it should be a no-brainer. So we're here. First step is to be able to change our level. Okay, so we wanna be able to change our level. So in the fighting stance, feet are nice and wide, and we just drop here. At this point, you should feel the back leg is powerful. You're able to push on the back leg. So most of the weight is on the front leg. So we're here, and we're ready to push. From here, back straight, most important thing. So let's do that a few times. Drop. Correct your posture. Make sure your lower back is straight, knees close to the ground, you're still on both feet. Again, drop. And again, drop. Good posture. Looking up, back straight. Other leg, same thing. Other leg in front, same thing. We're in fighting stance, and we drop. 
Again, drop. Leaning forward, 45 degrees. Back straight, bump out, chest out, head up. Again, drop. And drop. Make sure the knee is right above the toes. Drop, here. Good alignment. Stay facing straight forward. Sometimes people turn to the side, no. Straight forward, so you're ready to attack. Okay, now moving on. Using that movement to do the penetration step. So we're here, we're gonna drop. Then we're gonna push with this leg, knee goes to the ground. Now if you're on a hard surface, just don't touch your knee on the ground and just move around. So we're gonna skip this step and you're gonna go straight from here to here. And then squat position, side squat, okay? So let's wrap that up together. You can do the drop step or the lunge step, whatever you prefer. Ready? One, drop, knee, foot, foot. Correct your stance here, make sure your hips are low, back straight, looking up, and then side squat. Again, this way, here, drop, knee, foot, foot, side squat, okay? Now, let's do 30 seconds at your own pace. Do as fast as you can do it. Don't sweat it if you go slow. It's important to do it slow when you start. Let's go, 30 seconds, go. And progressively faster. Making sure you're doing the technique. Only go as fast as you can do it well. Yeah, no knee on the mat, same thing. Here, the knee just doesn't touch the mat. Same thing, don't put any weight on the knee. But it's the same technique. Go on 10 seconds. Head up the whole time. And breathing out as you initiate, super important. Keep going, five. There we go. Okay, shake it up. Now let's do the other side. I want you guys to work both legs so that you have a nice symmetrical body and good uh, balance in the, in the body. Okay, so here, nice and slow with me to start. Drop, facing head on, don't turn. Here, knee, good control. If you're on a hard surface, just drop it very lightly. Still leaning forward. Foot, foot, side squat. Again, do it this way so you can see. Drop, knee. Very slow, you can assist with the hand if necessary. Still leaning forward, posture. Foot, foot, squat position, side squat. Okay, now 30 seconds at your own pace. Slow if you need to, fast if you can. Only if you can do it well. Let's go. Knee. Drop step variation. Side. You can do a setup as well if you want. If you know the technique. Now, no knee on the ground, same thing. You just don't touch the knee on the ground. So you go a little bit faster. So sometimes it's better to do a fast takedown and uh, go a little bit less low. You still want to lean forward, don't want to hit with the shoulder. Other side, keep going. 10 seconds. Good to work the explosive power to the legs. Five. One more. There we go, break. All right, so that's the drop step, penetration step. Next, sprawl. Very important basic movement as well. So I'm gonna drop the hips. This is a defensive movement for wrestling. So I wanna be able to go here, hands on the mat. Let's do this drill first. So we'll go knees back and just drop the hips here. Shoelaces and foot over here. You go back up, arms remain straight. Drop the hips, drop the hips. Looking up, arms straight. Drop the hips, drop the hips, drop the hips. Drop the hips. Breathe. The goal of the sprawl is to stop the takedown with your hips. So you have to have a banana shape with your body. So you can stop the guy. Same direction here, the direction. Like so. Drop. Drop. Adjust the angle. Here. Here. Advanced variation. Bring the elbow to your ribs here. You're stuffing the head. Now, let's keep doing it from the standing position. Same thing, I'm gonna wrap it up. Shadow boxing, you guys know the basic punches. So yesterday, every count, drop on the sprawl. Ready? One, hips still, and back up. Pop right back up, and switch stances every time. Two, and back up, and switch every time. Three, and back up. 
little defensive movement. We're gonna see that more in detail. Four, back up. Keep breathing. Five, back up. And six, back up. Keep going, two more. A little bit more explosive, faster. As long as you can do it well. Take your time if you need to. Seven, and last one. Eight. So that's a sprawl. All right, next, falling. So this is many ways of falling. The most important one is the seated fall. So do it with me, nice and slow to start. So we're here, fighting stance, crouching position. So you go all the way down. Here, we're gonna put our hand, so the back hand on the mat. We're gonna bring our foot here close to our hips. And as we fall, we're gonna slide our hips backwards, keep our head forward, further forward than our knees. From here, we're gonna chain that with a technical get up. Here, like we did yesterday. Boom, bring the foot under, back straight, good squatting position, and rise up. Let's do it on the other side, same thing. Here, crouching stance, hand, foot comes close, scoot back as you fall. So fall, you shouldn't be falling hard, you can do that on a hard surface. Reset the base, reset the foot, technical get up. Make sure your hips are uh, low and your lower back is straight. And rise up, once more, for a different angle, here. Drop, back hand, front foot, shoot the hips back, lean forward. Reset, reset, technical get up, watch the posture, correct yourself, and back up. Other side, same thing, we're here, crouch, base, foot, scoot, reset, reset, get up, and back up. Let's do that at your own pace, 30 seconds only, go as fast, as you can do it well, okay? So, with a shadow boxing, seated fall. Most important way to fall when you are wrestling. You wanna protect your back from hitting the ground. Ready, on your, on your own pace. Let's go in three, 30 seconds. Two, one, go. Don't sweat it if you don't do it as fast as me. And if you're on a hard surface, take your time. And breathe out when you fall. Both sides. It should not be hitting the ground, it should be sliding on it. If you absorb correctly. Head forward is the key. Good seated position. We're gonna see that more in detail, yeah? Say hi to David Gomez. David Gomez, what's up? Hope you're training. Let's go, 10 more seconds, a few more reps, a little bit faster. Five. And break, all right. Catch your breath. Okay, now, one last technique for wrestling is how to fall on your back, if you do fall on your back. This is uh, really important and I find it taught not quite optimally in most cases. So, very cool drill they come up with for that. Adjust the angle, I'm standing on the ground. So from a seated position here, we're gonna throw ourselves back and we're gonna bring our chin down and breathe out. Now a lot of people teach you the hands like this. I, did, I used to do so as well, but I found it's not that important because usually your head's gonna be busy grabbing the guy, so you don't have the luxury of hitting the ground. Most important thing, chin down, breathe out. And you bring your chin down right before you hit the ground. Breathe out, here. Now for more advanced variation, keep your back straight so you practice absorb the impact. Here, so you fall flat on your back. Here, if you're on a hard surface, be careful, put a cushion maybe, but if you fall flat, it'll help you get used to that sensation of hitting the ground so your breath doesn't get cut out. Keep going, 10 seconds. Breathe out. If you're good, you can do it from the crouching. Here. And technical good. All right, that's our wrestling. Most important techniques. There are others, but these are the most important techniques for wrestling. Moving on, let's get into striking. So we saw the basics yesterday, fighting stance, fighting twist. Let's review that real quick. So, feet wide, one big step. Three things, remember at all times. Feet wide, knees bent, chin down. Guard, you can have hands here, 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 
And if you're confident in your head movements, you can have your head a little bit lower here in front, or even sometimes both hands low. Okay, but through the variation, beginners, keep both hands up, safer. Backhand glued to the face, it's my preferred variation. Okay, so let's move around. As you move, make sure you always keep your feet wide, knees bent, and chin down. So your shoulders are higher than your chin. Move side to side, up and down, forward and back. So the first layer of striking defense is gonna be your mobility. Just not being there when the person strikes you. So you have to be ready to move to the side, move to the side, move back. Always protecting your chin and always staying in a nice dynamic and stable stance. Always breathing. A little bit of head movements. Don't know head movements? Move your head off the center line. Up and down, forward and back and side to side. So that you're harder to hit. Keep going. 20 seconds, mobility in the fighting stance. Keep breathing, five. Lean back, lean back. Move. Always feet wide, knees back, chin down. Three, two, one. Quick break, grab a breather. Next we're gonna do punches. Basic punches, jab and cross. If you're just starting out, focus on the jab and cross. If you can though, throw some round punches in there as well. I'll explain. So here, fighting stance, jab and cross. Jab, weight forward, make sure your head remains above your feet. Don't lean too far into it and keep both feet on the ground. Yeah. Liam will follow along later today. That's cool. Yeah, if you're there, you don't have time right now, watch. It'll do, do be a good, uh, you'll see the techniques a little bit. And you can always come back to this video. It's gonna be published right after it's finished so you can come back and do the whole training. I hope you do. Okay, so keep training. Here. Jab. Now cross, fighting twist. Push off the back leg, turn the hips, turn the shoulders. Full extension. Align the shoulders with the target. Keep the chin low, protected on this side and this side by the shoulder and the fist. Here. Now jab and cross together. We're going kind of fast. Other leg in front, same thing. Jab, 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 cross. Breathe out. Stay loose. Well, you turn those hips, turn those shoulders. Keep your stance, feet wide, knees bent, chin down. All right, now round punches. The key, very simple, move your body first and swing the arm after. Don't use the arm to strike, it's the body that strikes. Uppercuts, overhands, hooks, it's always the body that moves first and you swing the arm around. Here, so free punches. If you're just starting, keep going with the jab and cross. If you know all the other punches, do any combination of your choices for punching only. Okay, so ready? One minute, three, two, one, go. Jab, cross, jab, cross, hook. Hook, upper, and switching stances frequently. High jab, low jab, overhand. High jab, low jab, overhand. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two. Here. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Keeping your head low, chin down, always in the fighting stance. Good fighting twist. Again, one, two, three, two. One, two, three, low down, six. Combo of the week last week. Here, one, two, three, six. Other side. One, two, three, six. 20 seconds, free punching. High jab, low jab, overhead. Whew. Uppercut, far uppercut. Boom, reaching far. Modification on the uppercut. Here, low cross, boom, to the body. Hook the body, uppercut. Mix it up, keep going, five seconds. Now sprint, go as fast as you can, stay relaxed in the shoulders. Use the legs, five, four, three, two, one, and break. Catch your breath. Okay, next, we're gonna do kicks. Kicks, the most important one should be the round kick. I'm gonna see the front kick as well, and if you have time, maybe the side kick a little bit. Again, this is a quick overview. So, round kick, same as the hooks, the goal is to move your body and then have your leg follow, okay? So, there's five steps to it, but in summary, throw your body, throw your body, throw the leg. So you drag your leg into the movement by moving your body first. So here, throw the body, throw the leg. Leg is loose, okay? Now, five steps. One, low, so bring the weight on the back leg. Two, step 45 degrees that way. Here, point the toes that way. And three, swing the upper body, shoulders, and hip. So once you've loaded, step, swing. So you're turning your body, generating momentum. 
Just do that a couple times. Here, load, step, swing. Load, step, swing. And four, load, step, swing. And then whip the hips. Here, pivoting on the bottom foot. Here, and whipping your hips into it. Throwing your hand in the opposite direction. This drill is really important to understand that step of the movement. And that's four. And then five, recover back to your stand. So let's do it progressively faster at your own pace. Keep doing it slow if you need to. And we'll do it for one minute with the left leg in front. Ready, go. Low, step, swing, whip, and recover. Nice and slow. Here, low, step, swing, whip, and recover. You try to do it smooth even though you're doing it slow. Here, one, two, three, four, five. Notice the pivot on the bottom foot. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, now a little bit faster. Start accelerating until you can go full speed. If you can go higher, that's good too, but I, I believe everybody should be good at the low kick first. It's very versatile, and it's uh, less of a, low, of a high risk. You're not risking of getting your leg caught as much when you're hitting low. But if you can, yeah, go high. Let's go, 20 seconds. Now let's do it faster. So really load, and all the way through. A bit of movement. Load, step. Keep going. If you're dizzy, that's normal. Careful not to bump into the furniture. Five. Couple more reps. All right, break. Catch your breath. Steady your mind for dizziness. Let's move on to the other leg, so same thing. Okay, so we've got left, uh, right leg in front now. We did left, and we did right, so you were the opposite. So to the other one. So here, one, load. So don't turn your back when you load, just bring weight on the back leg. Two, step. 45 degrees this way. Here, three, momentum with the upper body, shoulders and hips. Four, whip the hips, pivot on the bottom foot. Do this a few times, this is a good drill. Work the balance, hip mobility, hip strength as well, and for strength on the bottom leg as well. Here, keep breathing, throwing the hand on the opposite side, and five, recover, okay? One minute at your own pace. Let's go, here. Slowly, one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, and five. Progressively faster. Again, if you're just starting, keep going slow. If you have experience, do it faster. And again, start low. But if you can, go a little bit higher to mix it up. Oh, nice, that happens sometimes. Just get right back up. Keep going. That's the risk of high kicks. Keep going, keep breathing. 20 seconds. A bit of movement. Keep going, breathe. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, break. Relax, shake it off. Next, I'm gonna do front kick. So front kick, we want to bring the knee to the chest. That's the first step of the kick. So you want to be able to bring, let's do the lead leg first, knee to the chest. Like you want to knee yourself in the chest. Here, everything okay? Here, do it with me. Breathe out. As you lift the knee, lift the toes as well. So you want to lift your toes so you're pointing forward. Really quick, boom, bounce off, bounce off. Bounce off. A little bit of fighting sway. Always in the fighting stance. Knee to the chest. Knee to the chest. Knee to the chest. Other leg, same thing. Front leg. Knee to the chest, ready? One. Breathe out, two. Breathe out when you lift. Three. Let it drop right back down. Don't forget to lift the toes. Four. Five. Keep going, keep breathing. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more, nine, and 10. Okay, quick break, catch your breath. Next, we're gonna complete that with the kick. So while you're resting, watch here. I wanna lift the knee to the chest, and then use the rebound to go forward. So it goes up, and then forward in a straight line. Bringing the hips into it, raising the heels to recover more distance. So again, do not too fast when you start. You want knee up high, kick, middle distance. You're aiming for the belly to push the person back. Okay, so here. 
on the count. Here, one, lift and extend, come back. Again, two, progressively faster. Three, four, use the rebound. Five, and come back quickly. Six, so you always come back so the person can't catch your leg. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. Other side, let's keep going. Right away, no breaks. 10 on the other leg. Ready? One. Two. Use the rebound with the knee. Three. Four. Five. Six. Keep moving. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. All right. Relax. Breathe. Next. We're gonna. Hmm. Let's skip the side kick. Okay, it's not uh, as important. It's good if you're able to do a nice side kick, but it takes more work uh, to be proficient. And the front kick can do the same job. So you can okay, down the center line. So you can use that instead. I just get good at the side kick. Advanced students, you should be good at the side kick as well. Part of basic kicks. Now. Let's mix it all together with defense. So start, start with defensive movements and then we'll blend them together. So, like I said, defense, first step of defense is just not being there, okay, so it's movement. So we wanna be quick on our feet, always staying in the fighting stance, always protected, so feet wide, knees bent, chin down, and we're ready to move. We're always bouncing, so object in motion tends to remain in motion. That's gonna be a little less true if you're a heavyweight, okay, so 200 and above, you're not gonna move as much, but you still want to be moving, so you're ready to react, but you're gonna be more static if you're heavier. Here, so moving, especially moving back. You have to be quick at retreating at a moment's notice. Here, so stepping back and adding a little bit of a back movement with your head. Make sure your head doesn't go further backwards than your back foot. Here, and very important, tucking your chin as you move back. Here, so you're getting out of the way of punches. That's our first step of striking defense. We also need to be able to eat a kick on the leg. Especially, I like kick here, we're gonna go knee to the outside and kind of squat down a little bit. More weight on the front leg, so as you get hit, boom, you're gonna check that kick. Hit yourself with your palm on your thigh. Make sure that thigh is strong, okay? So if it's soft, it'll bend in, but if you're going towards the outside, boom, you can check that kick. Here, so a nice solo drill. Help you guys be able to check kicks to the leg. Other side, same thing. Boom, check the kick. Check the kick, knee to the outside, more weight on the front leg. Here, breathe out, like this. There we go. All right, so that's the checking your leg kick. Abs, you wanna be able to crunch your abs, breathe out while the punch is coming. Despite your best efforts, you will get punched in the stomach at some point during your sparring or striking exchanges. So you wanna be able to eat a decent punch. Squeeze the abs like you're doing a crunch, and breathe out. Again, use your palm. Hit yourself, and the sweet spot is the plexus here. That's the one that needs the most reinforcing. So breathe the air out, flex the abs, hit yourself. Here, here. Obviously don't hit yourself too hard if you're not there yet. Okay, so just a light strike. Make sure the abs are tight and no air in the lungs. So you don't get your breath cut off when you get hit. Eat the leg in front, be ready to eat a strike on the body. So defense, last line of defense, very important. And then the last part is hiding the chin. Sometimes, despite our best efforts at head movements and mobility, so head movements, this is the square, right? So head above one foot, above the other foot, leaning back, leaning back, up and down. You wanna keep your head in the cue, never outside of your base, okay? So head remains above the feet, and chin remains low all the time to dodge punches. And I'm gonna combine that with steps, so our head is harder to catch, okay? Either leg in front, we're ready to move our heads. Now, despite our best efforts at head movements, Sometimes you can get hit on the head, right? And in that case, it's really important to protect your chin and nose, and it's much better to get hit on the cranium or the skull. So when a strike is coming, you're gonna lower your chin a little bit more and hide your chin so that the strike comes on your forehead. You can do the same thing. So simulate a strike with your own hand, and it's coming towards your nose, your nose or your chin, and you just duck and bring your head down in order to eat that strike. Again, not too hard, don't hurt yourself. 
If you start getting dizzy, stop this. Okay, so here, and then other side here. Very important, it goes to the chin, hide the chin with the head. Boom, here, 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 another side, chin down, here, block with the head. Now, when we are doing this for real, we're also gonna have the hands in a turtle block. This is a really important position. So knuckles or hands on the forehead, we're looking with at least one eye, we're still moving, the strike comes, boom. We're protecting ourselves, keeping the, the elbows to the body at the same time. Answer the phone, comb your hair here, shoulder goes to the chin, arm protects the ear, and we're leaning our head towards the strike. Here or here, boom, here. So checking punches using the turtle block, either side or in front, very important. Either leg in front, here, here. So we're hiding our chin, bring our forehead first, and our arms are tight. Common mistake, you're gonna flare your elbow here, don't. Keep this tight as a helmet, here. Okay, so those are your basic striking defense movements. So mobility, head movements, eating a strike, leg, body, or face. Okay, we've got a cool video coming up. Um, MMA crash course that I did with my fan, friend Pierre Luc. So Pierre Luc, what's up if you're watching? Um, it's gonna be cool. We cover all the basics of every range with partner applications you're gonna get to see. Coming soon to YouTube. Now, let's do last part of our striking training. Let's blend everything together. So this is where you go kind of at your own pace. Take your time if you're just starting, but we're trying to blend our offense or our defense. This is what we call shadow striking. Okay, so we're gonna imagine an opponent in front of us. Nice and slow if you're starting, but faster if you can. And we're just gonna do all the offense and the defense blended together for striking. So let's go, let's do that for one minute. Okay, blending everything. Follow me, you can just watch if you're just starting, it'll give you ideas, but do it with me if you can. Okay, so here, let's go in three, two, one, go. So striking. Here, movement, punches, kicks. Defense, block, here, block, block and counter. Head movements, head movements and counter. Kick, high kick, come back, boom. Kick, come back, punch. Combo of the week, one, two, reload, kick. One, two, reload, kick, and disengage. Here, striking on the wall, move the head. That's the medals, <laughs> they're playing in the back. Here, protect yourself, protect yourself. Boom, to the body. To the body, to the face. Uppercut, hook, uppercut. Punch, knee, a bit more advanced techniques for you guys in there. Side kick, side kick, mixing it up. Stomp kick, hook kick. To the chin, keep going. 15 seconds, head movements. Head movements and counter, duck under, overhand, block, 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 strike, five, four, three, and two, one, boom, finish it. All right, whoo, okay. So that's our striking. Now, we're gonna do our grappling basics. So, I'm gonna use this opportunity to calm down the heart rate a little bit, so let's lower the camera. Now, first movement that we need to be able to do on the ground is shrimping, okay? So very important movement for the hips and to be able to do that, you need to be able to do first the seated position. So this is where hip mobility comes in. So that's the stretch that we did at the beginning. Very important, okay? So here, so we're gonna lean forward like so and making sure that we can bring our head as far forward as we can. So we want to be able to have our head further forward than our knees, like so. So if my head is right above, if my head is above my hips, I'm way too square. I'm way too vulnerable to getting pushed down. I don't want that. Okay, so I wanna have my head at minimum above the knees, but if possible, further forward than the knees. Check out camera, it's awesome. So, further forward. So if you can bring your knees to your shoulders, that would be optimal and your head is far forward, your elbows are halfway down your shins. Okay, so here, here. Okay, so like so. So we're, this is the seated position. Very important position you wanna work on. Okay, so either angle, here, we're leaning forward. Just like so, here. Now in order to shrimp, the goal is to go from a seated position where you are staggered, so the side seated position here. So we're symmetrical, like so. We're gonna go base with the hand here and bring one leg close to the hip like so, the other hand protects. From here, it's very simple, we're gonna extend this leg, so this leg, this hand will not move, and we're gonna scoot our hips backwards here to wind up back in our seated position. 
And if your space is limited, we're gonna go one backwards and then one forward. We're here, the legs are straight. We're gonna base again, pull with this foot here. Bring your toes to the mat and pull yourself forward like so. So we wind up back in the seated position over here. So let's do one backwards on the left, backward in front, and then the other side. So here, base, base, scoot, and then pull yourself forward, reset, symmetrical. Other side, base, base, scoot, and forward. Okay, so if it's not perfect, don't worry about it, but the most important thing is that you're able to bring your hips far and your head forward. Go sideways so you can see, here, here, and slide. And then bring yourself back using the same leg. Other side here, 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 slide. And bring yourself back using the same leg. Again, here and here. Here and here, a little bit faster. Let's wrap it out. All right, next variation, instead of the hand. Say hi to Warren. What's up, Warren? How's it going? I hope you're recuperating well from the surgery. Elbow, here. Instead of the hand, elbow, foot. Same move, okay? So elbow stays on the ground, push with the leg, here. So we wind up again in the seated position here, head far forward. Elbow stays on the ground, now pull yourself forward like a baseball slide. Other side, same thing. Elbow, foot, close to the hip, slide. Head forward, and bring it back. Reset, other elbow. Here, back, and front. Other side, back, and front. Back and front, back and front. Other angles you can see, elbow, foot, slide. Bring back, other side, here, slide. Bring back, other side, slide. Bring back, keep going. Two more, one, and two. All right, now, we did the hand, we did the elbow, let's move on to the shoulder. So we're gonna shrimp on the shoulder. So from the supine position here, <clears throat> now, super in position, we saw most important thing here is having also the knees to the chest. The so same thing as the seated, knees to the chest, supine, knees to the chest. Here, elbows on the inside, knees close to the chest here, so we have a tight guard. From here, if you want to shrimp, we're going to go here, foot to the outside, like so, and then the key is to go up on the shoulder only, so you don't want the hips to touch the ground. So the foot touching the ground, the hips, the, the shoulder touch the ground, the hips do not touch the ground, so they're free to move. From here, you don't want this shoulder to move. So you're gonna push off this leg, this shoulder stays where it is, and we're sliding our hips backwards using this movement. Here, and then we're gonna pull ourselves back in the same original position. Other side, here. Foot goes to the outside, I go up on my shoulder, hips are not on the mat, shoulder does not slide, slide the hips backwards, full extension of the leg, so we're bent in half, more than 90 degrees. Foot stays on the ground, and we pull ourselves back under, like so, back to the supine position. Again, here, here, and here. Here, and here. A little bit more advanced variation, you keep the hips above the ground the whole time. So you just don't let them land on the ground. Here. And bring your knee to your chest. Other side, so you can see here. Yeah? Pola, sore. Pola, hey Pola, how's it going? It's the mother of uh, George. Cool. Here, hips don't touch the ground. Good core strength. You're not able to do that, just slide your hips on the ground. That's fine. Keep going. All right, next, inverted shrimp. So moving forward. So here, we're going to start flat completely. We're going to reach for our toes here. So it's kind of like a side sit up or leg raise, it's a body raise. From here, grab under and then scoot our hips forward. Let's go back, hip escape, and then chest escape. And on the side, here, inverted shrimp, reach for the toes, pull your hips under, and then reset. Here, go backwards, hips don't move, now slide the chest back. Here, other side, leg straight, lean, grab, pull. And keep going here, backwards, knee goes in, chest goes out. Other side, inverted shrimp. Here, here, yeah. Look, look. Yeah. Good job, Sensei. Awesome. Good job, Luke. Haynes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. He's good training. Awesome white belt. Very good. He's gonna be an awesome martial artist. 
This is a good example, guys. This is a guy that's a fan of UFC. I just have, from move, watching the moves in the fights, he was able to pick up the techniques very, very fast. So do your homework, watch fights, it'll help you along. Now, so that's the shrimp. Now let's do a more advanced variation for you guys, the air shrimp. Okay, so this is really cool, and it's really important for your core strength. So for this one, we're gonna start in a supine position like so. Feet are pointing forward, and from here, we're gonna put the inside foot to the ground. So go side supine position. Knees are connected to the elbows. From here, Toes push on the mat here on the inside. Again, you can do this on a hard surface, there's no impact. And we're gonna bring our shoulder above the other shoulder. So we're leaning forward, like you want a face plant. Okay, but you're not gonna put your face on the floor. So we're here, going forward, and then this elbow, gonna pull it under your base. From here, you can help yourself with your other hand. We're gonna push with this foot and get our hips up in the air. So now you're only on your foot and your shoulder. And you should be stable in this position here. You can use your hand. You want your elbow connected to your knee over here. So this is the air shrimp. Very, very useful move in a lot of situations. And from here, come back. Other side, here. So a little hip switch, right? You remember that from the abs. Here, side supine position, inside foot, shoulder comes over the other shoulder, elbow retracts here for base. Elbow is connected to the knee over here. And, okay. Here, elevate the hips. So all the weight is on the shoulder and the toes only. Adjusting with the hand and elbow if necessary. Like so. And come back. Let's do that. 30 seconds at your own pace. We're almost done, guys. Keep it up, hang in there. So we're here. Let's go. Do it as fast as you can do it well. The key here, keeping the elbow connected to the knee. And getting those hips up nice and high. Breathe. Good exercise for the abs at the same time. Good core exercise. You need to have a strong core as a grappler. Very important. And as an effective martial artist, grappling is only one part of your skill set. I want to be a strong striker and wrestler as well. 10 seconds. <sighs> Diana doesn't agree. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one and break. All right, so this is the four variations of the shrimp. Next is the bridge, getting our hips off the mat. And you're gonna see if there's a nice overlap here between the shrimp and the bridge. So first part is just being able to rise your hips off the mat. So we're here, elbows in defensive position. We wanna be able to create space with our hips and get nice elevations here. Very simple, just get the hips off the mat, first step. Okay, so here, hips off the mat. Now we're gonna go side bridge, keeping the elbows tight. We go over one shoulder here. Getting those hips up high, boom. And looking towards the back, here. Other side, here. And the hips up high, good solidity in the movement, good base with the feet, and breathe out every time. Let's go one left, one right. Here, left, right, left, right, left, Right, okay, now, connecting that to the air shrimp position that we just did. So the bridge and roll with control. If you can do this slow, you'll be able to do it fast. And you can do both variations. So here, side bridge, retract the elbow, base with the hand, I'm still on both feet, and now I wanna put more weight. So I bring this top shoulder forward. Again, like I'm gonna face plant, but I catch myself with the fingers. Now this leg is not on the ground anymore. I'm still on the toes here. I pivot, bump up. Okay, so we're bum down, belly up. We go belly down, bum up, and we wind up in the same position here, elbow to the knee. And then come back, keeping the hips high, and dropping with control. Other side, same thing. Here, bridge, retract the elbow here under, base of the hand, put more weight forward so this leg is unweighted. Bring the knee to the elbow, and then come back with control, keeping the hips high, and coming back down. Get a few more reps, here, and here with control, back down, here, here, and back down. One more, left, and right. Okay, now, let's do it for reps with power. So now, no breaks, we're just gonna explode up and wind up in the turtle or kneeling position. So here, we explode, and then right back to our base over here, a nice tight defensive position, elbows tight, and knees connected here, so like we're landing in somebody's guard. This is one of the escapes for the mount. 
So here, on the left, on the right, 30 seconds only at your own pace. Try to do explosive now. Explosive movements, ready? Three, two, one, go. Breathe out as you go and come back. Here, come back. Make sure your feet are strong on the mat. So you can generate good momentum, good torque. Ten seconds. Keep it up. Get those hips up high. Be strong. Feel the ground with your feet. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So that's our bridge. Now, more advanced variation for you guys. Don't sweat it if you can't do it yet. Wrestler's bridge. I'm just gonna show this one, we won't wrap it out too long, but it's good for you guys to practice after for those more advanced students. Shoulder to the mat, here, tippy toes. Base of the hands, go inverted. Fight your balance. And then, toes to the mat with control, keeping the hips high, walk on the shoulder, back to original position. Again, other shoulders, here. Base, toes, to the mat with control. So you gotta bridge your body. Walk, walk, walk. Common mistake, if you stay round, you're just gonna roll. Which is not round, it's not roll, but it's not a technique you wanna do. Here, boom, wrestler's bridge on the shoulder. Walk, 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 one more time. Boom, here, walk, walk, walk. All right, so that's our bridge. Next, so we saw the bridge, the shrimp. Now it's time to roll, okay? So being able to roll. So. First, more basic variation, if you guys are not used to this, is just rocking. So from seated position, just be able to rock. The goal is to have a smooth rocking motion with your body, and the key is to have your abs tight, and your knees remain in the chest while you're rolling, so you can have a nice round shape with your back. Now more advanced variation is gonna go backwards over one shoulder, so the head goes to one side, I throw my legs back, and I'm gonna go over the shoulder until the toes hit the mat in the front. And now we're gonna keep our back round, and we're gonna rock here. So diagonal rocking over the shoulder. Here, like so, with control. Make sure the head doesn't touch the mat. We're still just on the shoulder. Here, here on the side. Here. Here. Okay, so that's a diagonal rocking. Next, I'm gonna combine that from Combat base, so getting up from seated to combat base. So here, fold the leg under, bring the body weight forward, and just rise up to combat base. So you're sitting on one shin, and the other knee is in the chest here. Other side, other basic movement to be able to get up from the ground. One, one way to get up, other than the technical get up. Here, there are situations that don't call for that. Here, and now let's go from combat base to combat base, so rocking over the shoulder, head goes to the side, I'm rocking on this shoulder, hip, tip your shoulder, and I stay in the same position. So we're riding up now in the combat base again. Now I'm gonna roll forward here, over the shoulder, back to combat base. Again, now let's switch sides. You can always switch sides mid-roll. That's gonna be useful as well. Combat base on this shoulder, combat base here. Notice my body does not move. You stay in a tight ball the whole time. And breathe out when you roll. Here, other side. Switch the legs. Go back here. Tight. Here. Really focus on your ab contraction. And the less sound you make, the better. All right, so that's our roll. If you do it correctly, you can do it on a hard surface because there shouldn't be any impact. When you're starting to practice, though, better on a mat. Next, last exercise for grappling is the shoulder roll, and then we're gonna do some shadow grappling like we did with the striking, okay? So, shoulder roll, final position, really simple, rock backwards, but now, instead of going on one shoulder to the side here, I keep my head in the middle, and I wanna stretch my neck muscles, ideally until the toes touch the ground. If you have a tendency to roll back here, stop yourself with your elbows, and bring your toes back to the mat over here. <sighs> nice and relaxed. Here, a little drill I like to do here, is go sideways, support with the hand. Here, just more of a personal preference. I feel it's a nice stretch in the back at the same time. And you're catching your hips with one hand at a time with a kickstand. Here, now, from here, let's go just rock shoulder to shoulder. Here, different angle. I go here, 
Now just rock one shoulder, drive the toes on the mat, other shoulder, here's all the way on the left, all the way on the right, and then from here, just keep going, keep your head in between your knees, all the way to the seated position. Okay, once again, don't worry if you don't have that, uh, it's a more advanced technique, so just do the final position, work on the stretch, most people don't have that flexibility when they start, but you will if you practice. So here, inverted, a little bit of rocking, shoulder to shoulder, and let's go all the way, seated position over here. Other side, here, seated position, uh, inverted, Shoulder roll position, also known as grab your roll. Sideways. Here, now the tricky part is going from seated to seated. So here, we're gonna keep our head above our knees or further forward than our knees. Fall directly on our shoulder, scissor the legs, and now that's kind of like the air shrimp. Remember the air shrimp? Here, getting the hips up in the air. Here, and now keep going, head in between the knees, base with the elbows, and keep going on the other side with control. If you can do this one slow, you will be able to do it fast. Fall straight to the side, scissor the legs, elevate the hips, tuck the head, breathe out, and come back. Keep going. The smoother, the better. I'll start doing it a little bit faster. Here, and here. Now let's do it from the supine position. So using the shrimp, the air shrimp that we saw earlier, connecting that with the shoulder roll. So here, foot, shoulder comes up, base with the inside elbow, elevate the hips, tuck the head. Shoulder roll, round here, control. Make a pause here, hips still in the air, base with the inside elbow, knee to the elbow, and then bring your hips back on the ground for the supine position again. And again, here, and on the other side, one more time, each side, here, air shrimp, two shoulder roll, here, the last one, elevate, base, tuck, and control on the way down. All right. So that's our shoulder roll. More advanced technique, don't sweat it if you don't got it. Next, last, shadow grappling. grappling. Let's do one minute, mixing everything together. So we've got bridge, shrimp, technical get up, roll, shoulder roll, all the techniques that we saw today. Okay, so we're gonna try to do everything fluidly. All right, so one minute only. Let's go and imagine a partner in front of you. Three, two, one, go. So maybe you do guard pass. You wind on top, person goes on top, boom, you retain guard and you bring your leg over. You sit up to combat base. Roll back, here, switch, kneeling, crouching, working on the stability and a low crouching position, different angles with the legs and the hips, basing with the hands, going into a roll, here, going back, here, going to shoulder roll, here, back to the knees, technical get up, going back to the feet, and back down, here, oh no, we got a good pass, here, we're gonna shrimp out of it, bridge out of it, again, here, we get pinned, Defense, shrimp out, and bridge. Here, oh, it doesn't work, gets back on top. You gotta reset the guard, here. Back to knee, like, crouching, here. Knee slide, get on top, control, base, combat base. Person tries to escape, we hold him. Oh, the leg, head gets exposed, guillotine, finish it. Anaconda, and they're done. Awesome, okay, so that's our shadow grappling. And that's it guys, that's your uh, white belt curriculum basics for all three ranges. So the three stripes for the white belt curriculum, we did our wrestling, we did our striking, and we did our grappling. Okay, so that's the overview of the white belt curriculum for effective martial arts. Now, if you have any questions, leave in the comments. These techniques again guys, are things that you should practice all the time, even advanced students, even myself, okay? So even if you have the opportunity to practice with partners, you should be doing these moves as well. Not just as a warm-up, but as training, okay? So there's a huge value, I think, in uh, shadow training in all three ranges of fighting. So striking, wrestling, and grappling, it's useful. A lot, it's very well known in uh, boxing. People do shadow boxing all the time. But hey, you could do it in everything, everything else as well. Okay, so wrestling, grappling, equally as good to work those body movements. Because if they are fresh and you have the muscle memory to do them fast and well, it'll come out when you need it. So under pressure in a fight and a sparring situation, you don't have time to think about the details of those techniques. They have to be ready, readily available on hand. So it's really important for you guys to keep them fresh. That's why we start with that with the white belts. So we make sure that white belts before anything else, 
even before we start doing more partner applications, we do a little bit as well to understand, but really focus most of our attention on those basic movements and on fitness. So that's what we did this week. Next, uh, today, uh, tomorrow, we're gonna do some more partner fitness applications and partner drills. So I know so many guys are stuck at home with family members, so I want you guys to bring them up. And uh, parents, if you're with your kids, you can use your kids and practice with them. I think it's the best way to get your kids active and engaged in their training is to do so yourself as well. So take this opportunity when you have the time to really uh, do more fitness training, more martial arts training, learn stuff that you always wanted to learn. And I, I truly believe that martial arts should be something that everybody learns. Okay? It's, it's, basic, it's part of uh, being a human. You need to know how to use your body as a weapon if ever you need it. Keep yourself safe and keep your family safe. Stay in great shape and just generally feel good about yourself. Uh, have more confidence and have a lot of fun. It's really mo the most fulfilling activity I find uh, to do practice on your own and with partners. So again, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you very much for being here with us uh, through these challenging times. But again, no matter what happens to us, we can always decide what we do about it and how we feel about it. And for me, I'm taking this opportunity to get more good stuff done, publishing more content for you guys, getting more information for you guys, getting you guys the motivation, the information, and to help you guys move forward in your martial arts training. That's our mission, is to help our students of all levels, from near or from far, improve faster through innovation. So once again, uh, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Point Claire, West Island of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.